Welcome, welcome. Have a seat, everyone. Welcome to the first lightning talk in a series of four 15-minute long lightning talks. Unfortunately, we will not have any time left for Q&A, but you are welcome to find each speaker after their presentations. So for our first round, may I please introduce to you Javi Gembe, who is our WordPress veteran, WordCamp speaker, and 21st WordCamp attendee this year. And not this year. Not you? Now all the years, yeah. It okay. could be too much, yeah. And um, he will walk us through how to prevent data leaks in WordPress. <laughs> so please give a warm welcome to Javi. Mm -hmm. Danke, thank you very much for being here and choose this talk. Or perhaps you just don't understand German as me, so you are here because there is the only talk in English. So, well, let's talk about uh, WP leaks. Uh, uh, you did a very, very good introduction about me. I'm a, yes, as, as you said, I'm a WordPress veteran. This is a term. A trademark from Renkus, so it's not my word, and I have to to thank thank him. Um, I'm like Renkus, but we are twins, as you can know. You know, I'm the compress uh, <laughs> the compress one version of Renkus. Uh, I have a since a month ago or two. I'm running a free project for the WordPress community that is. Uh, called WP Talklink, and it's uh, for language exchange among us, the people from the WordPress community. But my incomes come from Universal CM, that is my own agency. And I have this agency since 2010, and after more than 300 projects, I want to talk to you about some of my experience about this. And well, we I want to talk to you about data leaks and I will introduce you some cases uh, about this and just to uh, warn you and perhaps prevent it. So, well, the first thing I have to do is to define what is a data leak into WordPress. Well, in WordPress, we have two types of uh, data. The data that visitors see into the web pages, so we could call this uh, the front end. And also we have the data that we have for the internal use settings and also the all the things that has sense to the project itself for WordPress. And just in this part, the private the dashboard or the backend of the website is where the data that we have to prevent to leak in uh, to outside. Uh, for instance, we have the emails of the in BookCommerce, we have the emails of the users, all the purchases, uh, IPs, and a lot of settings, also security data. So we have to prevent that, that leak it uh, goes outside. Also, the, I think it's important the settings and all that of things. So, well, now the examples are coming. So, well, this is the first case I want to use. This is the only one that happens to us. So uh, this was a, a <laughs> nightmare. And well, now imagine that you have a, a client. Uh, in this case, was an NGO, a non-governmental organization, that asked us for create a private zone just for uh, sharing the PDFs and how they spend the money and just for for uh, the information for the people who pay the bills. So we decided to put a commercial plugin for do that. So everyone who with access uh, has its own uh, username and password and, and so on. And uh, we gave the keys, we gave the project to the client and I forgot and go to, to other clients to produce. And after a while I received an strange email from Google Search Console and I was, I check it and I found that. What's that? It's a Google results with emails. This is an example. It's not a, a screenshot. I didn't <laughs> did any screenshot in that moment. But imagine that you have uh, the list, the emails of that people in the into the well listed on Google. It's a, a hard data leak. Luckily, there were no personal emails leaked in that in this case, but corporate ones. But it could happen. 
And this is not just our case. And nowadays, in, on Google, you can find more than uh, 7,000 results with this problem, exactly this problem. So, well, this was my face when I found that. And after research, I, I, see, I saw that there were three things that happened at the same time and did that leak uh, happen. So what happened? The plugin create and it's set on by default that creates a have a CPT, a custom post type that is like posts or pages, but just for you do it, you do a custom name and you can use and it was activated by default. Uh, the client was using the email as the username that is not supposed to happen. And WordPress has a sitemap.xml file since WordPress 0.5. Uh, by default. So every, no matter if you have installed a, a SEO plugin or not, you have this in your all your installations. And this is an example. You type this, and perhaps it redirects you to the real one. But mostly of the WordPress uh, websites have this. So what happened is more or less an example like this. You have the user listed. So for instance, if you can enter into my bank account, you have to know which bank I'm using. If you can, you want to enter into a WordPress website, you mostly of the WordPress are using the same login page and URL, you, the, the Slack part, and you already have the user due to this, and you only have to find the password, so it's very dangerous. And also with a lot of taxonomies or posts or things that we are using just for setting up and to serve the content to the client, but perhaps they are not important, are uh, auxiliary, are not the, the things. So uh, this is what it, it happened with that project. The solution was, was on my suggestion for you is always check your sitemap.xml XML files for all the projects and see if you have to serve these things or not. In, uh, in this case, the project didn't need an SEO plugin because it was for, for private people, so we don't need uh, that. But it could be a good uh, suggestion to use an SEO plugin because there are some setups. I don't know if it's anyone from JOS or any other CEO here. No. Well, they have an option and you can quit and remove the site maps or whatever and it's very useful. And if not, or just in case as a, as a fallback, you can use a custom code, a simple PHP snippets. And I have in my GitHub account, I have some examples of how you you could exclude taxonomies, CPTs, and the user page that always will be removed from the same app. Okay. Well, now imagine, well, this case uh, is another. Now imagine that your client asks you to create a simple form, but they have an input uh, for files. And <laughs> uh, yeah. So, uh, for instance, imagine that you are in a, your client's a medical center and the doctor is asking for a personal test or and it says a, a, a data that you have to protect a lot. So you go and you install a, a form plugin with the input field and that's all. You, uh, what happened, and this has millions of results on Google, that a lot of uh, paths into the websites are unprotected. So it's very harmful because you can reach that type of documents. And this is the main path of the uploads, but every form plugin uses uh, its own. So this is quite dangerous. So always check if you are listing uh, the, the directories or the files into the ad directories. This is uh, something that happens. You can create an empty index.html uh, files or PHP as WordPress does. And just to prevent the leak, you can also add to HD access the, that, that directive. But for instance, it happens in some projects that the HD, HD access is deleted by, I don't know. So the safest way is always put an index uh, file empty 
And also, if you, there are some people that believe that if you upload a document to the WordPress media, uh, the gallery, you, this document is private because, for instance, you, you have uh, put a password into the page or whatever, but be careful. I'll, I'll talk to you later in another slide more about that, but all the things that you upload to the media can be reached by anyone. Well, um, more or less related to that, uh, imagine that you have uh, you are a content creator and you do the the common funnel send, uh, way and you create three steps, four steps, or just you give a free uh, PDF just for launching a for so the sorry the the visitors give you an email and then they do marketing with that. Uh, and you uh, could uh, feel that the thank you pages or the, the step three in the panel are not reachable by anyone because it's not listed in the menus or in the navigation of the page, but it can be reached. So, or well, also another good example is while you are uh, remaking one website with a typical under construction plugin, you may think that you are protected and no one can see what's inside, but it can be seen. And for instance, I create this page as an example, and you can reach that with the REST API that is already done and activated by default in all the WordPress websites. So, well, the, the solution or the suggestions is the same. Check always the REST API endpoints. I will show you uh, who are. Always with the SEO plugin, also set up well the things. And this is very dangerous or not, but the solution should be disable the REST API, but perhaps some plugins on the WordPress itself, itself could be stopped working. So it's quite dangerous. Well, uh, I will talk to you about similar type of leaks. More or less, you are seeing that I'm talking about um, two, uh, two paths and more, but take care about Google Docs. For instance, when you work in agency and you work with collaborators, you, can, you have to share the access for the WordPress websites with them. And I remember one case that I was uh, just playing with Google Docs and I found one, the first results, like I'm from Spain, is from Spanish uh, uh, results. And it was, there were a Trello leak of, well, not from Trello, from an agency that was using Trello for sharing the things. And I recognized the name of one of that agency. So uh, one, the owner was a puppy in one course. So I had to, to contact him and say, hey, you are leaking all your WordPress access of your clients, and that's insane. Also, be careful, as I said, with the REST API and the permission escalation I won't talk to you now. And this is the paths. Every WordPress site has this. You all only have to type the domain and uh, slash GP, WP uh, dash JSON and you have a lot of information. Perhaps it's not a personal information, but it's information that you are leaking into your WordPress website. You are selling there very easily, uh, mostly of the plugins you are using and a lot of things. This is um, the pages you have, the media you have upload, so you have to be careful with that. Also, you have the users, but there are not all the users, but the ones that have published content into the blog. The solution could be against Google Docs uh, if you share that kind of data, that I like access, cipher it first and have the same algorithm for, for the encrypt that. And disable or not, be careful with this because there are no good solutions yet, but some friends are working in a very good solution to cover all these parts. And, well, keep up to date, yeah. That will be. So if you thought you have following all the guidelines before hearing me of WordPress, I'm sorry, <laughs> perhaps I give you bad news. 
And, well, the, if you understand the first sentence, you are too old, ask me. Uh, check sitemarket.xml, well, all the things. Uh, the Google Docs also check with site, colon, and the domain name if you are leaking any data or you have uh, some things that has not to be into the WordPress uh, install. And tomorrow there will be a very interesting talk here. Uh, I think it's a... Well, Tomorrow, let's see, let's check the schedule and see that there will be one hour with, I think, these uh, suggestions and more. So, well, and the most important part, have fun. So, danke, thank you very much, gracias, and see you. Thank you, Javi. This was indeed an eye-opener. And before we move on to the next speaker, we also have a gift for you. Thank you. Okay. Ich muss mal gucken, ob ich die Brille noch drüber kriege. Wunderbar. Hi. Ja, perfekt. 